All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome. What we have for you today is a two-part auto extrication demonstration. To begin with, you may notice that we have a patient on the ground pinned beneath the front wheel of this car. We will also have a second patient who will be entrapped inside the car. Today, we look at the scene and we think about which patient needs the most attention first. And we look at that person on the ground with that car on top of them and we realize that's our critical patient, right? The person inside that car hopefully was belted and while she may be injured in some way, she's probably in better shape than the one underneath this car. In order to affect the positive rescue for this person, we need to get that car stabilized and off of them so that we can remove them without causing further injury. At the same time that we are doing that, the crew on the far side of the car will be making contact with the internal patient, checking her vitals, and deciding if anything needs to change in that respect. They will not make entry into the car until we have officially stabilized and removed the patient underneath so that we don't cause additional injury. The crews on this side have slid underneath the front wheel there are what we call our airbags or our lift bags. And they are currently hooking up hoses to a regulator control system that uses one of our standard air tanks to inflate those bags. Those bags can lift, depending on the size and how they're used, 25 to 30,000 pounds. This particular automobile might weigh 2,500 pounds. The other firefighters are preparing this wood you see here, these, these timbers, we call this cribbing. As we lift the car, we need to capture the lift with that cribbing so that if something were to fail, the bags were to fail, that car would not come back down on the patient. Instead, it would be captured by that cribbing. So as you can see, they're pre-placing as much as they can. And as we lift that car, they'll slide additional members in to capture that height. One person is in command. He's gonna tell people what he wants. He's gonna lift on yellow, lift on red. He's gonna tell them which color he wants to inflate. One person's in control of that controller. The other people are working to establish that cribbing so the car doesn't move. The th other crew on the far side, again, have made contact with that internal patient. They're holding C-spine because they're concerned about whether or not she has any kind of spinal injury. At this point, EMS would likely be on scene and probably helping us manage the patient on the ground. As you can see, they've got quite a big lift on there. That patient is completely clear. And they have cribbing in place to capture the car in case it were to come down. thing he did there, if you notice, is he let a little bit of air out of those bags and lets that car come down just a little bit, settles onto the cribbing. So now we have all the way to that car, setting on top of the cribbing, being transferred directly to the ground. It will not move at that point. The patient has been removed and will be handed over to EMS via stretcher and backboard as it comes around here the corner. If you want, we can have the crowd slide around the front of the car so we can see the other side. cribbing and bring the car back down onto its own wheels if possible back to a stable position we're going to chalk the wheels to keep it from rolling away after a vehicle's been in an accident it's hard to tell what's been damaged what's connected and what works anymore so we always just assume nothing works no brakes or anything we got to chalk the wheels to keep it from rolling away firefighter lex or uh, firefighter I believe it's Lexham, got into the car there. You notice he's going to continue holding that C-spine on that patient from behind the seat. He's also going to be talking to her if she's conscious and awake, telling her what we're doing, what to expect, trying to keep her calm. They're applying a cervical collar right now. It's going to hold that neck in, in position just in case she has any kind of an injury.
And again, we had contact with that patient immediately. We were talking to her. She was telling us what hurts, what doesn't, what, what can work and what can't. And at this point, we've decided the best my battery, there we go. Oops. I think I have to shout now. <laughs> it's C-spine action is a multiple firefighter issue. You have to turn her, slide her out onto that board, and move her. All without keeping that back from twisting or turning or bending.
Make any more sparks, right? We're always going to make sure that the scene is safe before we begin our work to protect those patients and ourselves. Are there any questions that I can answer? Yes, ma'am. A jack? Is it just a good old crank jack? Uh, it's not. It's not unheard of. Um, those spreaders are the fastest jack we have, right? They could have just stuck that under the car, lifted the whole thing up in about 20 seconds, right? That is a valid tactic, one we would have used. We like to demonstrate the airbags today, just as a different means of lift. Um, the problem with that is you're lifting from one point, things tend to teeter-totter and roll, whereas that airbag lift, we're lifting a large chunk all the way straight vertically. But a very good question, and it is something we do often. Other questions? There is no one tactic to attack this. It's kind of a trial and error. And what does that scene make it think? I, I make things it will, will work best. Uh, honestly, sometimes two firefighters on a bumper can just lift it three inches, and that patient can be re removed. Right? We're not even going to get tools out. Yes. What's the percentage of harm like being on fire? Um, post auto accident, rather low, believe it or not. I mean, we do occasionally you get a, you get a fuel tank rupture or a, maybe a small fire in, a, in an engine compartment. Uh, police are often on scene very quickly. They'll use their fire extinguishers to get those small fires out before we even arrive. Um, it isn't all that often, but it does happen. Um, there was one not too long ago on uh, off of Highway 10. A dump truck started on fire. Uh, and again, it's just it's one of those things that we have to worry about first. Got to get the fire out before we get the patient out. Thank you all for watching.